G'day, how you going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here. Got a nice simple project for you all to do today. I posted up a prior video of me sketching out the little idea of this little bird. It's going to be like a silhouette and we're going to put the moon at the top. Now I did a painting of this bird a while ago, um, which is something like this quite a few years ago, one of my early paintings. But instead of this nonsense here, we're gonna have our beautiful moon and that's how it'll look, okay? All right, if you come over here to the palette, we've got some white, I'm gonna paint this. Um, I'm gonna paint, I've just got a, an A3 size tape to me hardboard to the easel there. So I'm just going to use white, phthalo blue and some yellow and I'm using the retarder to um, get our paint blendable and stay wet a bit longer than normal. So we'll quickly paint this A3 paper, it's canvas paper out of a book I've got from the Art Supply. So I'm getting all this in there. The colours I want to put over this, I'd like to blend, like an oil paint can be blended. And with acrylics, if you don't use a retarder, well, it could be a bit chalky and awkward. Well, I'll start with the yellow. I'll put some retarder into that yellow paint. Just get it under your brush any way you see fit and any way that works comfortable for you. And I'm going to start in the middle of my canvas, or a bit lower than the middle. I'm gonna put the yellow there, and then it's roughly there. See my brush? I'm gonna just wipe that, wipe the paint off it, and then go back to the canvas, and then bleed that yellow into nothing up to here. Just into nothing, that'll do. And then, I'll give it a bit more of a wipe. And then the same down the bottom because we're going to add some blue. So you don't want to be trying to put darks over lights. You want to work it out. There we go. Right, now we'll get our phalo blue, putting some retarder in that. Just get it onto the brush. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Get the hard color, because as blue goes into yellow, it'll turn green. So I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, that's enough. And I'm going to wipe that paint off my brush. And we'll bleed that into the yellow nice. We'll blend it into the yellow. So, you can see, I've got some brush strokes there. You could leave them. But me, I'd like to keep going very lightly, blend it out. I want to glow, because this is my printout I'm going to use later on. He's going to be there somewhere. So I've got to work out. I'm going to have him roughly there in the painting. So from his head, I'll move that. That point there, I want. Now I'm going to just get me white. And we'll get this glowy area there. So I've marked roughly where I want it. So I'm going to put the paint there. All right, I'm getting quite happy with that. So we'll use this orange one here. So we'll put some of this on the palette. This is only, we're not using much of this orange. All right, I've got some little clips on there just to hang it back up. Now because I'm gonna blend this orange, I'm adding some retarder again. Now, this retarder, come over here so they can see. This is a medium retarder. It, uh, it delays the drying time of acrylic paints. Okay, that's what I'm using. Different countries might call it a different product. I'm not sure, because I've had a few people ask me, where do I get it, what is it called, how is it? But in reality, it's just something that slows the drying time. Now this orange is just gonna sort of, just go here and blend into that yellow. Now, if I've let that yellow dry too much, I might have to blend the yellow into this orange. But at the moment, 
that might be working all right. Because this is going to have clouds over it anyway. This is just a background colour, this orange. But it just needs to be there. And of course, orange can blend into blues, which gives you that deep purpley colour. So I'll just get a, another brush and blend that. I've just swapped brushes. But see, I can find that that's dried a bit too much. Come in here. See how it's gone a bit gluggy? So this is still wet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some yellow on my brush, not too much, and then get the yellow back into that orange. And that'll help me blend that back together. I'm bringing that up into the orange, give it a bit more body as well. Now we're going to add our blues up there. So, all right, now we're ready to get the phalo blue at the top again. Bit of retarder in there. We don't need much. To me, that'll do it because I want to leave some of the whites in there. I'll grab my blending brush and I'll blend these blues into the whites so it's got light bits and dark bits. But if it if it's not happening for you, you've got to make it happen. Oh, that'll do. Now we'll get Mr. Purple. I'll leave that paint. I won't worry about cleaning it. I'm just washing it, wiping it on my rag. I've got some purple here. the blending brush again. I'll blend that purple into the blue. Just gives us a darker edge to our painting up there in the sky. And blend that some more. Okay, now I'm going to get some white. Kiss these pieces together. That'll do. Okay, now what I'm going to do is just blow dry this so I can start putting a moon on there. Like I said, it's always good to blow dry your acrylic paint because I want to put the moon on there, eh? Okay, that's dry now, ready to put our moon. So I've used a, a coffee lid and then scalped out the hole in my paper. And we'll just put this over roughly where we want our moon to be on the painting. Which I'm going to take it about there. Okay. Alrighty, I've got some grey that I've mixed up, which will be used in the moon. Now these colours are not going to be worked with a retarder. These are just going to be used with water if I need to water them down or whatever. I've got me how household sponge. Now I'll get a bit of white on here as well just for our moon white and now I've got that cut out there for the moon so now we'll get a bit of white we'll start off with some white get it on the sponge work it in now we're gonna we've got this on me sponge now as always everybody knows I like my moons evaporating so we'll get the the basis on here, keeping our edge here reasonably tight to the cutout. The finer the sponge, the better it will stamp on there. If you've got a um, a really holy sponge, that's probably better for bigger work. It'll won't be as fine near the edge of your cutout. Now we've got that there ready to take on some grey. So stay on there. I'm just going to get some of my grey now and stamp onto the... We want it to sort of give it that dimension. Okay. So that, that's pretty much the basis. Of me stamped moon anyway, that'll do it. All right, we'll take that off. Stay there. 
Okay, you get an idea of our moon. And as always, we'll get our, my fan brush, and we're gonna start with my choppy row of clouds, because it sort of sits the moon back into the sky, okay? So we'll get our fan brush all chiseled up again with some white. What I'll do is I'll just keep things a bit wet if I need to be. Now, come up to the board there again. Now, as I use my fan brush, and we're gonna have a choppy row of clouds, so nervously shake, swing it around. Now, see what that's done? That gray has washed into my cloud, which to me is a good thing, because what I like to do is I'll blend the top of that, I mean, leaving the top again, as you all know, and blend the bottom down into the atmosphere again. I'll use a better brush for blending. I don't like that one. I'll use this one. So we're going to blend this down, okay, as normal. Now see, it's even picking up some of that yellowy sunset stuff, which is good. Now I've blended that. Get some of that grey in there, Ian. If there's not enough grey, I'll just maybe dot a bit in there. Because under the clouds, you need dimension. And this grey, if there's just not enough there, We'll give it that dimension. Whoosh it up there. Okay, now I'm going to get my white brush on the fan again. And as you all know, we put another one in front of that. Chippity it along. If you're happy and you know it, paint a cloud. I've said that a few times. Push out there. Now we get our same feathering brush. Blend this down. I call it feathering. Americans call it blending. As you know, I'm from Australia, so we use different terms. You know? You know? Anyway, so we're getting our row of clouds in front of the moon, but as I stated, get this down there a bit heavier. Come on, you bastard. Get in there. See, it's got to be a bit darker up there. Play with them. Play with your clouds if they're, they're not working for you. Even the best of artists don't get every job done perfect, you know. They've got to play with it. Now, I'm going to sort of do this and then quickly blend this down into the atmosphere. And that's put some of the sunset colours in the clouds. You don't have to go and literally paint a um, orangey, sunsetty coloured cloud. Now, we get our brush load up, and I might want to see how that's just sharpening up there. Now, we'll put our bits of... Um, Misty stuff in the sky as we always do. So we'll quickly put that there Misty space stuff we call again, you know, see I've just watered that down and it's allowed me to turn that into a sort of smoky mist Get our fan brush again and just sort of Crisp some other ones in front of it. See what that's doing. Have you got a good look at that? Yeah, we're just sort of crisping Some other ones in front of it and I might do the same down here. Get it. Now, if you squint your eyes and stand back from your painting, you can sort of get a gist of what might need sharpening up, as so, so to speak. That'll do me anyway. Now, I still want something more blendable down here. I've got to work quick because this yellow and orange has been dried. So we're blending that into the atmosphere, see? There you go, play with it a bit. Now see how that to me looks washy? Maybe grab some yellow, smash it in there and blend him up a bit. And then what I'll do is I'll get the, I'll get the um, white on there and we'll just sort of, that's it. To me, that's it's just got that little bits of wash in there, you know. 
Okay, so come back here and you can get an idea of what, we, what we're achieving here. All right, now I've finished the layout of the top there. I'm just gonna dry that. And then when this is dry, we're ready to place the layout there to be carbon copied onto the painting. Yeah, I've just gone and added some main stars in that sky as well before we put the carbon on there. All right, so we've got our print ready to tape onto our painting. Now come over here, we've got the carbon paper. Because carbon paper is so skinny and hard to handle, what I do is I'll get a bit of A4 under there, but we'll put our print out onto the painting first. So there was my slight glare. I want my head of the painting there, which is about there. Where are we? Go about there, which is about, that'll do. So then I'm gonna just take that on there softly. And then you use this A4 paper to pick up the, see I've picked up that carbon paper, nice and firm, and I'll get that underneath. Okay, which is fine there. And then I'm gonna use the red pen because it'll be able to show me where I've already drawn around the edge of it. Okay, okay so we'll, we'll start off, get our red pen, and we're just going over this. You don't have to press like buggery on the damn thing, just, Get the outline on there because once we take this off we'll just grab our black paint and then paint all this in black and Bob's your uncle okay now with this bird you can see on the printout that there's little furry bits just indicate them there so when it comes time to black out this lines onto the canvas you know that you've got some little furry bits there and you can sharpen them up as best as you want as you're painting the black out onto the canvas, okay? We'll grab this bit of paper again. We'll get under there, take the carbon paper out carefully like so. And you can see, I'll just peel this tape off. Okay, you can see our markings there ready to paint onto the canvas. Right, I've just put some black paint in my lid, use it anywhere you want, and I've watered it down a bit. And you get yourself a variety of small brushes for detail in all these areas. And get it to the edge of your lines, and then start colouring in. This is a tedious part of the painting, but it all comes good in the end. Just concentrate on getting the edges the edges, where'd they go? The edge is nice and sharp. See here, I'm pushing the edge of the brush, nice and sharp to that edge. Then you can worry about filling in the, the middle bits, okay? So, turn the brush on its side. Now I've changed brush, I've got a finer one. Start with these little hairy bits, if you've got something like that. Come from the pointy bit out, just, so you can make them nice and fine. Just come into the area which is going to be blacked out and then that'll all be blacked in. It's the same with all these little hairy bits I've got to get to. Oh, I keep forgetting to breathe, eh? <laughs> got to breathe when you do this sort of work, ladies and gentlemen, people out there and, yeah. Okay, we're just onto the home stretch here, finishing this black out into the silhouette. This is the bit you look forward to, is um, finishing off all this blacking out. Then you can walk away from your painting and then turn around and have a quick look at it and see how it smashes you in the face if it gives you any of that wowness or whatever. Get some more clouds in here. Bearing these. Just want some atmosphere coming down from the top. All right, now we're just getting some more oranges here into what we've blended down so we can
bring this sunsetted area of the sky lower so I can put some clouds with this. All right, so that's ready to add some clouds in there. Just finishing off this clouds coming down to the atmosphere here. And then if you like, you can do that Just get some sharper edges there to distinct your clouds from background stuff But I'll just take all this masking tape off the edge of it Where's, where are we? Where are we starting from? Take it off nice and slow so you don't rip the paper behind. It's a canvas paper, it should be hardy, but you still can have those accidents where it'll tear the paint. Careful, don't peel. All right, that's pretty much it. I don't know what we call it. We can call it a moonbird, anything you want, but um, I'll just sign that now. That can be framed, sprayed, varnished, whatever. Hope you enjoyed that simple exercise. If you like anything I do, comment below, subscribe, do all those sort of YouTube-y things. Goodbye, good luck, good on ya.